number 96, Angels from the Realms of Glory, hymn number 96. Number 96 on that first there, Angels from the Realms of Glory, hymn number 96. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation's story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Amen. As we're finding our place, let's sing that first again, number 96 on that first there. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with man is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplations, Brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations. Ye have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship. Worship Christ the newborn King. Amen. I want you to think about that on that last there. What is the response of God being with us? It's come and let us worship him on that last day. Lift it out to the Lord on that last. Saints before the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear. Suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship. Worship Christ, the newborn King. Amen. 102, number 102. Hymn number 102, Born to Die. Born to Die on Calvary. On that first there, 102. On the night Christ was born, just before break of morn. As the stars in the sky were fading, or the place where he lay fell a shadow cold and gray of a cross that would humble a king. Born to die upon Calvary, Jesus suffered my sin to forgive. Born to die upon Calvary, he was wounded that I might live. Amen. That's a little bit unfamiliar, but let's sing that first again as you get used to it there on that first there. On the night Christ was born, just before break of morn, as the stars in the sky were fading, o'er the place where he lay fell a shadow cold and gray of a cross that would humble a king. Born to die upon Calvary, Jesus suffered my sin to forgive. Born to die upon Calvary, he was wounded that I might live. On that last there, dearest Lord, evermore, may thy cross I adore as I follow the path to Calvary. Of thy death 
I partake my ambition, I forsake all my will, I surrender to Thee. Born to die upon Calvary, Jesus suffered my sin to forgive. Born to die upon Calvary, He was wounded that I might live. Amen. You may be seated as pastor comes with the announcements. Amen. Good to see you tonight. Looking forward to what God has for us and following the evening service tonight, men's meeting. Uh, we'll be meeting just going over some things in the church. So if you're a member here at College Heights Baptist Church, men, I'd like to meet with you in the back room. So I will not meet you at the back door tonight. Uh, we'll just exit out this way. And, and uh, men, if you would come, that would be great. And uh, 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 families, you need to get with get your kids and uh, make sure they're all taken care of, etc. So that's, that's where we're at following tonight's service. Uh, looking forward to uh, a youth activity on December 17th, and uh, what a blessing that is. And so you can get with Brother John, and he can give you some more details on that if you have questions concerning that. Isn't it great to have Patch the Pirate going tonight? Amen. I, uh, I, miss, I miss our kiddos, uh, but I'm thankful that they have class. And uh, I know this, when I was growing up, uh, some of my some of my greatest um, Bible learning happened on Sunday night, and so I'm thankful. I'm so thankful that our our kids have patched a pirate, and uh, past, uh, Brother Saul is doing a great job uh, teaching that class. And so uh, he said today went well, and uh, um, they're back. And so what a blessing it is as we continue with that. All right, let's all stand again. And let's sing. 103, I heard the bells on Christmas Day, number 103. Think about those words as you sing it tonight, 103 on that first there. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat. Of peace on earth, good will to men. I thought how as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, good will to men. And in despair I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, good will to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep, God is not dead nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, good will to men. Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolve from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chance of mine, of peace on earth. Good will to men. Amen. Number 91. Hymn number 91. There's a song in the air. Number 91. There's a song in the air. There's a star in the sky. There's a mother's deep prayer and a baby's low cry and the star rains its fire while the beautiful sing for the manger of bethlehem cradles a king there's a tumult of joy or the wonderful birth 
for the virgin sweet boy is the lord of the earth may the star rains its fire while the beautiful sing for the manger of bethlehem cradles a king in the light of that star by the ages impearled and the song from afar has swept over the world every hearth is a flame and the beautiful sing in the homes of the nations that jesus is king we rejoice in the light and we echo the song that comes down through the night from the heavenly throne. May we shout to the lovely evangel they bring, and we greet in his cradle our Savior and King. Amen. You may be seated, Pastor. Amen. Good to see you tonight and looking forward to what God has for us. Take your Bibles to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, and let's look there in Mark chapter 7. How many have all your Christmas shopping done? <laughs> oh, my. Men are saying, what? We're supposed to go? All right. Yes, not to the gun store, all right, not to the gun store. Well, maybe some, all right, but nonetheless, tonight I want to preach a message I've entitled, Is Your Heart Right? Is Your Heart Right? Uh, I certainly remembered as Brother Ingram came and preached to our church, and it was a blessing um, many years ago. And uh, he kept talking about clean, clean hands and a pure heart. Clean hands and a pure heart. Well, as we come to this passage of Scripture here tonight, uh, the Pharisees have issue with Jesus. And um, uh, they had been watching Jesus, and they found the problem. And again, just as the Pharisees and as we see uh, the scribes here uh, uh, of Jerusalem, they're going to find fault because they are not, he, he, him and his disciples are not keeping uh, their religious rituals. And so let's, let's look at this tonight, and I pray it will be a blessing to us. We're going to read all the way down to verse number 23. So follow along here as I read out loud. And it says, Then came together unto him, the Pharisees and certain of the scribes, which came from, what's the next word? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. All right. And, they, and, and when they saw him and his disciples eating bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands off, eat not, holding to traditions of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not, and many other things there be, which they have received, uh, received to hold as the washing of cups and pots and brazen vessels and uh, of tables. Now, let me just pause here. If you have problem with germs, you would probably be a good Pharisee, all right? But it wasn't just a germ problem. All right, it's not, it, we're not just talking hygiene here, okay? Uh, so don't just, don't just think all of us others who may not wash our hands all the time, okay, are weirdos, all right? Uh, but um, Jesus and his disciples didn't do that. But you, if you just think it's a hygiene problem, you're missing out. Let's read on, verse 5. The Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why walk not thy disciples according to the traditions of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said unto them, Well hath he, Elias prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honor me with their lips, but their, what's the next word? 
heart is far from me. Uh, we need to be careful with that. Amen. Uh, we, we don't want to get to the place where we are acting out like we're a Christian. It, it should be something that we're not acting out. Amen. It, it ought to be something that's really coming from right here in our heart. It ought to be something that is, is real. It's not something we're putting on. It's not something that we get up Sunday morning and go, oh, yeah, I got to put my church face on. Oh, yeah, I got I to gotta think biblically today. Oh, yeah, it's different than any other day. No, my friend, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there's no difference in it except you, I mean, except on Sunday you get to come to the house of God. Amen? I, I mean, that should be the way we live out our lives. And so... Uh, as we continue on here, let's see, I made it down to uh, uh, verse number 7. Howbeit ye, ye in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine, here's the problem, doctrine, the commandments of men. Now, I want us to be very careful here. This does not mean that we cannot put down some rules. Amen? Uh, rules help us. Okay? Um, there's some rules in my home that my home follows. There's probably some room, rules in your home that your home follows. And, uh, you know, if you take it off, it doesn't belong right there. <laughs> it, you probably have a place you need to put it. Uh, maybe there's some rules like, um, uh, um, um, I was trying to think of some rules, all right? <laughs> uh, you, you have, we have rules, all right? Uh, there's, the Bible is not saying that rules are bad. What has happened here with them is they've taken uh, some things and they've, uh, some, some, some rules and they've made them as if God commanded these rules to be so. Verse 8, for lay aside the commandments of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And, ye said, uh, unto, and he said unto them, Full well ye rejected the commandments of God that ye may keep your own traditions. They, they, they moved aside from what God really wanted and, and now they're just, they're just doing their traditions. That's, that's what they're doing. For Moses said... Here's what Jesus is going back to. Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso cursed father and mother, let him die the death. But ye say, if a man shall say of, uh, uh, to his father or mother, it is Corban, that is to say a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother making the word of God of none effect through your traditions. There's the problem. Their traditions made this not count. What God was really telling them to do, they didn't want to listen to it. And so they created a religious system where they would, before they would ever eat, it was tradition or ritual to wash their hands. And they had a problem with the disciples not doing so. Goes on to say, But if ye say, if a man shall say to his father, I already read that part, let's get down to verse 13. Um, Maketh the word of God of none effect through your traditions which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Uh, 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 you might pay attention in your Bible reading such like things, like when you see the word like, uh, this is a, this is a, a, a kind of an inclusive word uh, that that is is kind of generic, uh, but it it, it 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 opens up our heart and minds to uh, a little bit broader spectrum of what he's talking about. Verse number fourteen, and when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto me, hearken. Unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entereth into him that can defile him. But the things which cometh out of him, those are they that defile the man. 
If a man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he, he ha was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive what whatsoever things from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him? Because it entereth into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the draught, purging all meats. And he saith, That which cometh out of the man, that defiled the man. For from within of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. So Jesus gets right down to the problem here. It's from within. And he says they, that proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, thefts, covetous, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and an evil eye, blaspheming, pride, foolishness. All these things come from, next word, within, and defile the man. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Lord, we thank you for the privilege that is ours to understand your word and, Lord, to uh, just be in the Bible once more. Lord, I pray that you would help us and, uh, Lord, help our hearts to be right with you. Lord, we want to have a clean heart. God, I pray that we would examine examine our heart. And, Lord, it would not be what we do just because uh, we want to look good on the outside and we want others to think well of us. And, and Lord, we want to look good uh, to people. But, Lord, would we realize that when you look down from heaven, you see our hearts. God, tonight I pray that we would hear what, what our Savior taught as he walked upon this earth Lord, even as he tried to help the disciples and even tried to help these scribes and Pharisees understand that they were missing it with their traditions, God, tonight uh, I pray that we would understand these truths. Bless now the preaching of your word, for it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. As we get going here tonight, I, I, uh, I, I was just amazed as, as Jesus was very strong, is it not? Uh, as as he begins to uh, talk with them, um, uh, he calls them names and uh, 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 and just basically tells them, "Hey, uh, you're not dealing with the real problem. Uh, you're being very hypocritical in in what you're doing here, as as you are focusing on on the ritual and not on truly what is there." So we begin in verse number two. We see the scribes and the Pharisees come to Jesus, and there at the end of verse number two, they said they found fault. They found fault. And uh, uh, they had come to him, and uh, the scribes watched Jesus and his disciples, and they noticed that his disciples were eating without washing their hands. And when they, found, when they saw this, they had a problem with it. Let me say it's easy to find fault with others. Amen? Why don't you say that tonight with me? Ready? It's easy to find fault with others. Amen? I, I mean, in a family, it's easy to find somebody else who has a fault. I think we're just like chickens. You ever been around chickens? If there's a sore right there, we'll, the chickens will run up there and they'll peck it. How many have seen that happen with the chicken? I want to see how many understand what I'm talking about. All you city folks, you need some help, all right? And uh, uh, chickens do that. They, they'll see something wrong and they'll start pecking at it, start pecking at it. And it, and it just makes it worse. And I, I've been in there. I, I talk to the chickens, all right? I know they can't understand me. I don't go balk, balk, balk. I was just like, hey, hey, don't do that, you know? <laughs> you guys are hurting each other. They, they just, you know, they're animals. They can't understand. And, uh, you know, people find fault. It's not too long when people, even when people get saved, I wished our fault finding went away. I wished it went away, but it doesn't. We can find fault. And uh, here, the scribes and the Pharisees, uh, now, there's nothing wrong with having discernment. Amen? 
We should have discernment. We should know the difference between right and wrong. Come on. I'm not teaching this universal falsehood that we have going here. There's no, there's no right. There's no wrong. It is do whatever you feel like. No, the Bible is very clear on this. But, but they got to this place where they were finding fault. And we need to be careful in our lives in, in finding fault. The word fault means to place blame. Uh, 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 they, they turn to Jesus uh, because uh, he was the leader of, of the disciples and, he, and, he's, and they were finding fault with him. They were placing blame at his feet. And he was say, they were saying to him, why is this that, that, that uh, uh, your disciples are not washing their hands? And uh, um, notice here in verse number 3 and verse number 4, uh, it, it tells us that the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding to the traditions of the where did these traditions come from? Elders. Came from people that passed it down to them. And, and when they came from the, the market, except they wash, they eat not, and many other things there be which they ha have received uh, to hold as the washing of cups and pots of brazen and tables and so uh there there's a whole list there of rituals that came one man uh, uh one preacher he said this this washing had nothing to do with clean and dirty hands but with the ceremonial uh, ceremonial uh r rinsing the ceremony involved someone pouring out of a jar onto another's hand whose fingers must be pointed up so it was a certain way to do this, all right? Uh, that, that's, that's what my studying came uh, across. So their fingers were to be pointing up. As long as the water dripped off the wrist, the person could proceed to the next step. Then they had to pour over, uh, have water poured over both hands with the fingers pointed down. Then each hand was to be rubbed with the fist of the other hand. Now, let me just say, when I went to Uganda, I was glad to wash my hands, all right? Over there, we ate with our hands, all right? Uh, you, would, it would, you picture it this way. You pick up your mashed potatoes with your hands. It reminded me of eating at the nursing home, all right? <laughs> all right, not so funny, all right. Uh, you, you pick up, you pick that, the mashed potatoes up, and then you dip them in the sauce, and then you put it in your mouth. Everybody's doing it, all right? That's common over there. Over here, it's not so socially accepted, all right? Over there, it's, it's commonplace. So as in Uganda, man, I had food all over me, and I looked like I was three years old again. Not really, all right? I didn't get it up into the eyebrows, all right? All right, but... But uh, uh, I was happy to wash my hands. I was really happy when they poured the water out. Oh, yeah. I, I, I didn't want to be the last one. How many know what I'm saying? Huh? Have, have you ever been the last one? My dad used to say this. By the 10th child, you could walk on the water. All right? I'm not going to fill in all the details there. But I sure praise the Lord for real showers that drained. <laughs> amen and amen. Well, um, uh, here they, they did this ceremony, and uh, if everything went right, uh, they, they would, as long as the water dripped off their wrist, the person could proceed to the next step. Then he had water poured over both hands, fingers pointed down. Then each hand was to be rubbed with the uh, f fist of the other hand. And so I guess it was something like this, all right? So, so that's... that's Something, some kind of little ceremonial uh, that this preacher said went on. And so as the, as the Pharisees watched what was happening, Jesus' disciples did not, did not do that. I want us to take a look here um, and, and just, just look at some other scriptures. I believe that they'll help us. Let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 
hold your place there in, in Mark. We'll come back to it. But, but I want to take you over to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And uh, there we look at verse number 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 12. It says, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not, what's the next word? Expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Uh, and so as we think about what God's word tells us in helping us with our actions, with the way we live our lives, the rules that we, we follow. Uh, all things are lawful for me, but I will not, uh, all things are not expedient. Let's look at another verse in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, in verse number 23. Again, almost the same words as it says, all things are lawful for me, but all things, I'm in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 23. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient all things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. And then we move to another thing, and, and we're talking about what helps us uh, in, in what we decide we're going to do in life. Uh, all things, we, we can do these things, but, but some things are not expedient for us to do. And then we, we bring in another thing, another thought, and that is found in 1 Thessalonians 5, and verse number 22, and by the way, this is a good reason. Now, it's not that, it's not that, uh, um, uh, uh, um, it's not that we're trying to please men. It's not that we're trying to keep rules so we look good to someone else. But for sake of testimony, there may be some things that we're not involved in. There may be something that, that, that uh, we're not going to partake of. It says here in 1 Thessalonians 5, in verse number 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. Um, I can remember somebody saying they saw their preacher driving and they thought for sure he was smoking. Well, he had just been preaching about smoking, and he shouldn't be smoking. And uh, they hurry up and sped up because they wanted to see, did I see that right? Preacher was smoking. And they got up there, and he had a pen in his mouth. It was just the appearance. You know, sometimes, I'm not talking about something so foolish as that, but I'm talking about, there may be some things we don't need to be a part of. There may be some things, places we don't need to go. Why? Because of, of the appearance of evil, of people wondering, why is that person there? That's not a place where a Christian should be. And, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, th those, are, those are things that we need to make sure that we're not giving off the appearance of evil. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Let's look in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 at, thir at verse number 13. Here's another thought for us, okay? So we're talking about um, uh, uh, rules that we might put into our life and some things that might help us. Uh, I like that thought as we looked at those first two verses. Uh, all things are not expedient. In other words, maybe I don't need to be involved in this because it's not going to help me spiritually. That, that's a good thought, amen? I, I mean, maybe I don't need to put this into my life because it's going to hinder me. Uh, uh, what is the appearance of this? And then here's another uh, that might help us to, to just build some things into our life, not to become uh, caught on a ritual where we're trying to wash our hands in a certain way, but biblically helping us to have something in our life that can help us. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, look at verse number 13. Wherefore, if meat maketh my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. And here, here the uh, Paul, Paul is, is just saying, hey, 
you know what? Um, people are more important to me than the things that I do. Uh, people are more important to me. Their, their salvation, I, I can't imagine uh, uh, Paul, as, as he was talking about this, as he was thinking about this, he's saying, hey, people are more important than me uh, doing what I want to do. And I'll be careful with that. Let's look at another passage of Scripture. Go over to Romans chapter 14. The book of Romans. Brother Ian did a great job of preaching the book of Romans in Sunday school. So much, much of this is being covered in that. But let's just read a, 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 a few verses here. I think Romans 14 can help us with this. Him that is weak... In the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. Let, him, let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? Uh, to his own master, he standeth or falleth, yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth it not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth thanks, and he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth not thanks. For none of us live unto himself, and no man dieth unto himself. Now, I do not believe that, that, that the things that, that we have in our life should be dictated just because of what others think. But I believe the principle that is being taught here is what are we doing in our life because he is in control. Because we're doing it as to him. What, what we're doing. Uh, uh, so many times we, we're, we're going through life and uh, just like the uh, uh, Pharisees. Let's go back over there to Mark chapter 7 again and look at that in Mark chapter 7. And uh, uh, we see in Mark chapter 7 um, uh, they found fault. Jesus wasn't doing it their way. And uh, yet... God's word teaches us how we can establish some rules in our own life to help us set up some things that can keep us from becoming just like the Pharisees and, and uh, doing that which is from without. And he takes it a step further. Let's look in Mark chapter 7, starting at verse number 6. Um, I went back too far one chapter. Okay, Mark 7, verse number 6. He answered and said unto them, well, hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. I tell you, uh, I know a lot of people that say they believe in Christ. I hear a lot of people say that they're Christians. In America, it's a common thing. Uh, they, they think that we are Christians. Um, uh, there, there's, um, uh, it, it is, it is commonplace for people just to say, say one thing, but, but here Jesus calls them hypocrites. Uh, why would he call them hypocrites and why was he condemning this? Uh, because they were, they were dealing with the outside, uh, uh, and, and not with the inside. Verse number eight says, for laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups, and many such like things ye do. So these, these religious people had religious things and traditions that they did that Jesus said, you're laying aside what God really commanded. Look at verse 9. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandments of God, that ye may keep your own traditions. And, and so, uh, uh, not only does Jesus say you're replacing what God said, 
but you've moved to the place where you will not even accept what God has commanded. Uh, now, that's a sad place to be. But listen, that's what false religion does. Come on, think with me about this. Instead of, instead of a person accepting God's way of salvation, they reject and say, you can get to God however you want. There's many paths. We also believe that there's one God. We also believe this. And, and, and they, they begin to, they begin to uh, make the commandments of God without effect. In other words, you can get to heaven without Jesus. My friend, there's no other way. There's no other way to get to heaven but through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. If you, if you start accepting a man-made religion, good works, uh, we're all getting there because we have such good hearts. No, my friend, we are sinners in need of a Savior, and we need to make sure that we do not change the commandments of God. What, what are the commandments of God? Jesus said this, ye must be born again. If you move away from ye must be born again, you are changing the commandments of God. Oh, yes, this world, they, they talk a nice talk. They look good on the outside, but their heart is far from God. God, help us and deliver us from false doctrine. Uh, Jesus here is telling them, you've, not, only, not only have you re, uh, laid aside these commandments, but look at verse number 9. And he, uh, and he said unto them, Full well ye have rejected the commandments of God, and uh, that ye may keep your own traditions. And so uh, they, they, they reject what God has commanded just so they can keep their own uh, way of doing things. And not only does Jesus condemn this, he exposed them here in verses 10 uh, all the way down to verse number 13. Let's look at this. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Now, what does the Ten Commandments say? Yes, that it may. It's the first commandment with what? Promise. That it might be well with you. You know what happened to kids in the Old Testament time that dishonored their mom and dad? They would die to death. It was serious business. Boy, we're a long ways from that. I ain't saying go home and kill your kids, all right? You say, man, preacher, what are we supposed to do? No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. Uh, by the way, we train them up in the nurture and ambition of the Lord. We, we apply discipline in a correct way that helps them to understand that there is an authority in life. You know, rebels hate authority. You can have an authority problem. Listen to me, teenagers. You can tune out when adults are talking to you and act like they're not saying something. Why? Because if you don't hear it, you don't have to deal with it. God deliver us from that. God deliver us from that. We need to listen and we need to honor mom and dad. Here Jesus says, follow along this. This is pretty awesome here. As they come up with this word, and uh, Corbin, Jesus starts to talk to them about this practice called Corbin. Look at verse number 11. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father and mother, it is Corbin. Uh, uh, this means a gift offered to God. Uh, uh, the, the commandments of God are very clear. God said in the fifth commandment that we are to honor our father and mother and that, that our days may be long upon, uh, uh, upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And if the, and in he that curseth his father and mother shall surely be put to death. Uh, um, no, they, they did away with this and they weren't honoring mom and dad like they should. We look at verse number 14 to 23. 
Jesus had just pointed out that the disciples, uh, I mean, not the disciples, the Pharisees um, found fault with him. And then Jesus points out the problem is really what's going on in their heart. Because notice this as we come in here to verse number 14. It says, And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. Now, I don't know about you. Have, have you ever thought it would be awesome to hear Jesus preach? Hey, everybody pay attention. We tonight can enjoy that from the Word of God. What did he say? Look at verse 15. There is nothing from without a man that entereth into him that can defile him, but the things that cometh out of him, those things are the ones that defile a man. So here in, in verses 14 to 16, Jesus talks about uh, uh, the things that, that can defile the body, but really what he's trying to get them to understand, and, and, and the disciples were even confused by what he was teaching, um, even as in verse 16 he said, If any man have ears to hear, let him, let him hear. Verse 17 says, and when, they, and when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. Jesus, what were you talking about? We, we didn't understand. We didn't understand what, what you were talking about. And, and they come to him and they, they begin asking him the meaning of, of what he was talking about. And uh, then in verse number 18 and 19, uh, he, he gives some more as he says, And he said unto them, Are ye without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatsoever things from without entereth into a man, it cannot defile him, because it entereth into him, into it, because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the draught, purging all meats. Isn't it amazing? Sometimes we'll eat something, and we go, "Oh man, I got hold of something bad," and it ain't pretty soon it'll come out. I know that's gross, but I'm just telling you that's just what happened. That's just what happened. And Jesus is saying, this is not what I'm talking about. This is not the kind of defilement that I'm talking about. Let's see what he's talking about. He's, he's not talking about what goes into us uh, like, like uh, 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 defiling us from that side. But look at verse number 20. And he said unto them, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of man proceedeth evil thoughts. Now, we're getting down to the heart of the problem. Jesus said, what's in here? Someone says this, and uh, um, uh, when, you're bump, when you're bumped, what comes out? You know, I fall, I fall under conviction when I, when I begin thinking about that because sometimes I don't like what comes out. And Jesus here is saying, what's in your heart? What's in your heart? We can keep all the outside rules. We can go to church. We can look pretty religious. We can be a good old boy. We can act good. But Jesus doesn't want us just looking good on the outside. He wants us to deal with what's on the inside. And uh, the only way that can happen is if somebody is born again. And when we are born again, God doesn't want us going back to sin. I had a man ask me this last week. He asked me this. He said, if I get saved, can I just go sin as much as I want to? Now, he was being honest, all right? And I think it was a pretty good question. Because he's looking at Christianity and saying, 
I think this is what I see. I think I see people that say they're Christians, but they keep living in sin. And then he says, if I'm living in sin and I die, do I go to hell? <laughs> now, here's somebody that doesn't agree with the Bible. He's looking for man's reason. You have to peel it back and go back to what did Jesus teach? So let's, let's answer the first question. Do Christians sin? <laughs> I just wonder if anybody would say no. <laughs> All right. Well, we know there's there's a liar right there. <laughs> All right. We are, we are sinners. I even pointed to David. David was a man after God's own heart, and even though he was a man after God's own heart, he he, he got into sin. Now, our heartbeat as we're born again should be I don't want to sin. I I answered him when he said should a Christian sin? I said, the Bible says what? God forbid. Amen? Should we continue in, in sin because grace abounds? And the answer is, God forbid. We don't keep on sinning because God will, will overlook it. All right? Hey, God, God's word says that he wants us to live a righteous and pure life. He doesn't want us to continue on in sin. And, and so, so Jesus here is trying to help us as he's helping the, the, the Pharisees and the scribes. And he's saying to them, clean up the inside. Hey, th there's something that should be cleaned up on the inside. And that something is only what can be washed away by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And not only that, notice this. Um, Jesus goes into a list here in these verses um, as we get to uh, verse number 21. And, and I don't know about you, I like list. Uh, I went to the grocery store last night. I, man, I have so much fun at the grocery store. They shouldn't let me get out on my own like that, all right? <laughs> No, I don't. I wander around, okay? I called Debbie to three times just trying to figure out, where's this? Where's this? How many men know my problem, huh? Oh, yeah. You know, I just, if I go, if I go to go shopping, I want to go for one thing, bring it home. You know, go there, get it, kill it, drag it home, all right? A uh, real man style. But I was wandering around. They had me looking for all spice. Now, this is the honest truth. I'm going to be honest. I looked and I looked for allspice. I went by it five times, five times. How many know where the allspice is? Let me see your hand. All right, next time. Oh, you guys make me sick. I, I was looking for the allspice. I called. I, reached, I finally reached the body at home. Aren't you glad when you reach somebody, right? And I reached my daughter and I said, do you not happen to know where the all spice is? She says, Dad, it, it's got to be right there with the spices. I'm standing right there, and I'm, I'm telling you the truth. She said, it's in a little jug, a little, little container. How many already knew that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's no fair, sending me for all spice, you know. I, I don't know what all spice is. Surprised I didn't come home with old spice, all right? <laughs> hey, I got it. <laughs> Afraid she put that in the muffin she's making, all right? So she, they sent me for all spice. I looked up. She says, it's in a little container. On the top shelf was a little jar that you can only see the lid. And I read the, I read the in real small letters, I had to get up real close, all spice. I said, hey, I found it. I think all the, all the whole grocery store looked at me. <laughs> what is going on? I wanted to run around and show them, I found the all spice. I, I was looking for all the other men who were looking for the allspice. I like a list. I like going through a list. I got, I got all the way through my list and my phone turned off. Battery ran out. And I was trying for the life of me. What was the other thing? What was the other thing? I didn't want to go home without everything. I already had a few extra things, amen? I didn't want to go home without everything. I, I, I couldn't figure it out. I thought about going out in the car and sitting there until the phone charged up, but it was too cold, all right? So I just went home. They, we we're going to have to pick it up later. I like a list. Here's the list. Look at this. 
starting verse number 21. For from within, out of the heart, proceedeth evil thoughts. Notice, it starts with an evil thought. How did you end up doing that? Out of the heart proceeds an evil thought. Goes from evil thought to adulteries. Illicit sexual activity by married persons. Adultery. God, I believe that Jesus wasn't just talking about something that doesn't happen. I believe he was dealing with a culture and even our culture today that's saying this should not happen. Fornication. For from within. Where do these things come from? Murders. You know, we even looked at that on the Sermon on the Mount as we need to make sure that we're not angry with somebody else. We look at the next one on the list. Thefts. Taking something which does not belong to us. Covetousness. Craving for that which belongs to another person. Wickedness. This word means malice. It refers to all the ways that evil thoughts manifest themselves in a person's life. It is a deliberate act of meanness. Wickedness. An act of meanness. Going back to that analogy of chickens, people can act that way. And Jesus was dealing with it. He said, it's wicked. He goes on to say here in this list, um, deceits. This is where we're maneuvering to ensnare someone for our personal advantage. Lasciviousness, this word means to, 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 refers to unrestrained, shameless behavior. It is an attitude that says, I will do as I please, and I do not care that anyone, what anyone thinks about it. Lasciviousness. An evil eye. This is an expression that speaks of envy or jealousy. It looks at the blessings of another and desires it for themselves. An evil eye. Blaspheming. Using our speech to defame somebody else. Proud, being boastful or exalting oneself. Foolishness. This, this is just, just being foolish. Talking or referring to those who are morally or spiritually desensitized. This world has a lot of foolishness going on. And God's saying, that's coming from inside you and it needs to be dealt with. You know, we can keep the outside right. But Jesus tonight is speaking to us about the inside. What a list. What a list. As he, as he finishes off here at verse number 23, all these evil things come from within and they defile the man. What defilement was Jesus talking about? It wasn't the defilement where you get something because you didn't wash your hands. 
He was talking about a defilement that's even greater than that. And that's the defilement that messes up our life. And I believe here tonight it would do good for us to look into our own hearts and see what's in there. See what's on the inside. That's why when we come to Christ, we ask him into our heart. We invite him into our life. and He'll come in. And his spirit will bear witness with our spirit. What a blessing it is as, as, we can, as we can live a life that can bring honor and glory to the Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed tonight. Tonight we're going to sing an invitation song. Let's sing, Have Thine Own Way, Lord, Have Thine Own Way. Before we stand and sing, let me ask you to examine your heart. Holy Spirit tonight's been talking to you if you're saved. There may be something there that you know you need to deal with. There may be something you've been wrestling with. Maybe even tonight you're, you're good at faking it. Maybe tonight you can get that right with God. We're not here playing a religious game. We're here tonight to learn at our Savior's feet. God, help us to do that. Heavenly Father, would you work in this invitation time? Would you speak to our hearts through your word? Lord, I pray for teenagers tonight, God, that they would live a life that would bring honor and glory to your name. Lord, they would not just keep the religious rules because that's what Christians do. But Lord, tonight they would do what is right because their heart is right with you. Lord, help us as adults. God, it's easy to leave the God we love. Lord, tonight I pray you'd burn in our hearts and our lives a desire to stay close to you, not to allow sin to slip in and drag us away. Bless now this invitation time, for it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. We'll grab our hymnals. Page number 485. God's speaking to your heart tonight. Would you come? Let's do business with him as we sing on the first right here, 485. Wounded and 
weary. Help me, I pray. Power, all power, surely is thine. Touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Amen. Good to see you here at College Heights Baptist Church tonight. So glad you're here, men. I want to meet with you in the back room back here. Uh, hopefully we won't be too long, uh, but we got some things that we need to cover and looking forward to that. I'm going to ask Brother Ian to come and give us a report on how today went and uh, uh, then close us in prayer, if you would. Amen. We were uh, actually just myself. I was at uh, Turtle Mountain Baptist Church uh, there. If you're going down to Cuba. And uh, there are, uh, as you go down there, uh, through, I believe it's Escrito, it's, there's two churches kind of on the side of the highway. You get about an hour uh, down the road there, and uh, Turtle Mountain is on the left side there as you're going down. And there uh, with Brother Ken Oster, he uh, recently took over that church and has been uh, helping there. And it was a blessing uh, just to see what God is doing there. And uh, they, they have, uh, even just listening, they've had some struggles over the years, but there just seemed to be a real good spirit and there was about uh, about 20 people there this morning, and then uh, this afternoon there was a number that stuck around for the afternoon service. So it was just a blessing, and they did. They took a step of faith, and they uh, voted to take us on for support, and so that was a really big blessing uh, for me, and just to see even their their step of faith. Uh, I'm their second missionary so far right now, and so that's just that's a blessing, encouraged me to me, and just had a blessed time of fellowship with them, and so thankful for what God is doing, and just uh, be in prayer for them, and, and they are praying for us. They, they mentioned that specifically. Several mentioned that they're praying for our church and thankful for it, and so just thankful for that and just thankful for that opportunity. So let's go ahead and be dismissed with a word of prayer. Lord, we just thank you for your word, and Lord, the challenge that it is to our hearts, Lord, not to just have a system of traditions or beliefs that cause us to uh, do away with your word, but Lord, that we would uh, get to the, the heart of the issue, which, Lord, is our hearts. I just thank you for that truth. I pray that you would help each of us to look inside, Lord, to look in your word, and, Lord, just to, uh, to examine ourselves, Lord, the areas where we are allowing our lives to be defiled. Just pray that you would just help us to get that right. And, Lord, we just thank you that it's not dependent on us cleaning up our lives, but, Lord, that if we will confess it and forsake it, Lord, that we can have mercy, and, Lord, that you can cleanse our lives, and Lord, we'll confess that to you. We just thank you for that truth. Thank you for the work that you're doing in our hearts. Thank you for our pastor, Lord, putting that message on his heart. And Lord, just thank you for your goodness to us. I ask that you would bless, keep us safe, help us come back uh, together again. Lord, I just thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen.